I've been around entrepreneurs all my life. My parents were entrepreneurs. So I've, I've been born into looking at ways to build business and looking at opportunities. I started using computers in early 90s and basically became a programmer. And, and my passion was to be a, a Java programmer. So Java was, was a programming language built for the internet in the late 90s. And basically, I was fortunate enough to get hired as a Java developer, became a Java architect, and then coincidentally got into identity management. I had a project with a state and local government in the US that gave me the opportunity to build a pretty sophisticated portal for citizens and the medical community and the government. So um, that was a very complex use case. It still is by today's standards. And uh, I fell in love with the domain. So being a techie and being the sought after the architect and developer to managing a team of 70 plus employees, I've gone from a techie to, uh, to a CEO and I uh, love every mo moment of it. So so techie to CEO, techie, uh, certainly there's bias, there's uh, assumptions, all that kind of stuff, personality wise. Having met the team, having seen the team, you guys have like a, a winter getaway. You have t-shirts made with everyone's personality type based on comic book or superhero, whatever. Like, right. uh, what was the transition like or how easy was the transition going from individual contributor, tech expert to the business guy? You know what I mean? Like being the CEO, yeah. oftentimes, you know, when you go from individual contributor to person manager, there's an emotional dynamic that that shifts there. But then yeah. going to CEO as well and running the business and being responsible for everyone's mortgage sort of thing. Yeah. What was that journey like? Yeah, I, I was fortunate to... Um to work for a great company and work specifically with the Sun Java Center where I was surrounded by rock stars, individuals that published books, spoke at large conferences. So I was pushed to do things that were out of my comfort zone, like publishing books, speaking at large conferences. That sort of gave me tools and prepped me for public speaking and getting myself out there. But at the same time, what I realized working for this group was how essential it was to, to be a, a closed group, a collaborative group, when I started Indigo, my whole thing was about enabling others, creating a highly, highly collaborative environment and be very, very good at what we do. It was an incremental build, right? We didn't get to, uh, to 70 plus employees overnight. It took a team to, to get there, but our turnover is very, very small. I think everybody enjoys working at Indigo. And frankly, in the older days, it was a little more difficult because we had to travel so much. Today, not so much. So I guess um, there's there's even more retention as a result of that because we, are, we still are in consulting. So I I'm still very close to the tech. My architects roll their eyes. If they hear this, they'll probably be uh, <laughs> uh, smiling. But I, I still consider myself a, I'm a highly technical person. I could be dangerous in meetings. But again, it's all about building a team. And uh, what gives me the high is is building a highly competitive team. As Simon Sinek says, what's your why? Yeah. My why is ba basically building highly effective and competitive teams that are really, really good at what they do. That's awesome. Love the, the Simon Sinek reference to the, the capability, the quality, you seem to have the mentality of do it right the first time instead of do it wrong three times and figure it out sort of thing. Can you remember the pain points that, that didn't keep you up at night, but the pain points that stressed you out about hiring? Like what were the reasons to seek help yeah. with hiring? Yeah, I mean, I'll go back to what I said initially. Uh, surround yourself with people that are better than you uh, in specific areas. And you guys came in with a methodology. And that methodology sounded good to me. It was music to my ears with respect to going through a process of evaluating before you presented a resume. You didn't inundate us with resumes where we still had to take the time to go through them and identifying who was a good candidate for what we needed. You guys filtered really well. You understood our business. But what, what impressed me most is you actually learned about our business. You're a curious type, John. You always wanted to know more about what we do, how we do it. And I think that translated to your hiring process where you were able to understand what we were looking for, not only on the technology side, because we are niche. It is very hard to hire talented individuals that have the capabilities that we're seeking, but also the culture. I think the culture is really important and you just got it. The actual business impact 
Act without highlighting anything IP or anything that shouldn't be shared. Can you can you speak a little bit to the quality and how that impacted the business? We're in, in professional services uh, business, which means that we cater to our clients and specifically in our domain, um, it's extremely difficult to find resources that are that have the capability to deliver. We seek individuals that are curious and have the ability to learn fast. We provide uh, an enormous amount of training. We have boot camps, we have all sorts of certifications and individuals that have the ability to grasp really fast and go through a pretty demanding process to 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 get them ready uh, to deliver. This is the one attribute that was extremely important for us. And you guys helped us identify those individuals. I guess we had a pretty good hit rate as well. Out of the 22, I believe we've hired 22. So that was, that was pretty good.